not a lean tool like other lean tools. It's not just a small intervention that you will do to correct or adjust or change something. It's it's more like a, a, a diagnosis. Uh, today we're with uh, Norman Sawyer from uh, TXM and uh, the topic of today is the uh, value stream mapping. Uh, we're going to talk about the importance, how it's paramount to gather the data from, from the shop floor, from, from the operations. So, uh, Norman, uh, explain us what exactly is a value stream mapping. Yeah, thank you, Sylvain. So, uh, a value stream mapping, like many other mappings, you, we all know the process flow mapping. The value stream mapping difference is that it, uh, it's a detailed picture of your entire value stream. So the, um, uh, the essential information you get from a value stream mapping is that you collect data at each process step uh, to be able at the end to better measure the efficiency of your process and highlight and identify gaps or areas where you need to improve. Uh, like, uh, like many other mapping uh, uh, processes, you usually do a current state mapping first uh, where you will uh, uh, walk the shop uh, uh, with, with your team and collect data, real data at each uh, machine or process steps. Then you analyze your process, you identify your gaps and based on lean principles, you identify where you could improve and that's where you will design your future state mapping. So there are two steps. The current state first, that is, I would say, uh, unfortunately, this is where people have a tendency to go fast because they say, we know we know how it works right now. We, we don't want to spend too much time and, and they want to jump right away to the future state. Um, I think it's a mistake because by better understanding the current state, this is where we can be in a better position to identify what exactly need to be improved, but also to look at the entire chain not only at specific areas. So altogether, I think the VSM is probably a great tool to start your continuous improvement journey uh, because it's gonna highlight, you know, what you need to prioritize and how you need to, uh, to put together all your efforts. Great. So what are the objectives of a, we call it VSM, the value stream mapping. What, what are the ob objectives? But the, the objectives overall, I would say that it's um, uh, to help you visualize um, uh, th three things. First of all, your uh, information flow. How, uh, how is the information flowing from, from your, your, your production control to each uh, production steps? Um, that's what I call the soft side of the value stream mapping. It's more like the HR uh, uh, side of it. So how people communicate to each other and commonly what we have is we have a supervisor that go and tell everyone what he has to do at uh, you know, each uh, production. Uh, can, we, can we improve that? Can we uh, uh, automate? Can we simply uh, in a meeting in the morning give all the instructions for the day, right? Uh, why do we need someone to tell me what to do when I can have the information listed or simply in front of my machine according to a specific you know, standard? So that's one thing, information flow. The second one is the material flow. Uh, how do my uh, parts or production uh, progress through the var various uh, production steps? And this is where the data collection is extremely important. We go on the shop floor, we measure at each process steps or at each machine, how much whip do we have? How many parts are sitting in front of my machine? And that tells me clearly well, listen, I might uh, have a, a, a production cycle of one minute, but if I have 200 parts in front of my machine, that tells me that I have for 200 minutes of work in front of me. So do I need to produce even more? Do I need to continue? Or I should synchronize and adapt my, my, my equipment. So information flow, material flow, and also the global picture of how all of that work together. So the objective is really to give you details that will help you analyze where are your, your, your strengths or your weaknesses in, in your process. And, and based on that, definitely, the, I would say that the, the main objective is to help you prioritize what should I do first? Where should I put my efforts? 
right? Uh, where is my bottleneck? Once I identified my bottleneck, how can I use various other lean tools to improve it and to uh, uh, streamline and, and to uh, have a better efficiency? The VSM is, um, it, it, it's funny, it's, it's, it's not a, a, a lean tool like other lean tools, right? It, 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 it's not just a small intervention intervention that you will do to correct or adjust or change something. It's it's more like a, a, a diagnosis. It tells you this is the health of your process or if your entire value chain. Mm -hmm. And and you want to grow, you want to bring new production, but before you do so, understand where are your gaps or your problems right now. Exactly. And that's what it helps you with. And once you've done that. Then you pull on all the other lean tools. You can put an end on here, uh, 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 adjust your Kanban, uh, improve just your, your your visual management, right? You have floor marking. You're gonna have boxes in front of your machine that can bring you bring your cart. So there's only one box on the floor, which means that there's only one cart at a time. So you will adjust your production. So if someone comes with four or five carts. Well, no, there's no room. The parking is only for one cart, so there's only one cart coming in. So you adjust your, your you synchronize your production also. So that's that's what happens following the VSM. Everything else takes place, and your expert, your lean uh, engineer, will be able to bring you know their their talent and improve the entire production. So that's what I say. VSM should be done at the beginning, and then you know what you redo it every year just to see if what we said we would improve really improved. And sometimes yes, sometimes no. If it's no, well, we start back and we do it. So it's that's what we call a continuous improvement. Uh, thank you, uh, Norman.